This is a summary of Part 7, Exemptions to Kenya's Data Protection Act. Part 7 of the Kenyan Data Protection Act outlines specific exceptions to the general data protection principles and requirements. While emphasizing the importance of protecting personal data, the Act recognizes that certain situations warrant exemptions to ensure other interests are balanced. General principles still apply, Section 51. It's crucial to note that even when an exemption applies, data controllers and processors are still bound by the core principles of lawful processing, data minimization, data quality, and the need for robust security safeguards. This means that even exempt processing activities must be conducted responsibly and with data protection in mind. Grounds for Exemption, Section 51 the Act lists several specific grounds for exempting data processing activities from its provisions. Personal or household activities, data processing carried out by an individual for purely personal or household purposes is exempt. This recognizes that the Act is primarily concerned with regulating data processing in a professional or commercial context. National security and public interest processing necessary for safeguarding national security or the public interest is exempt, acknowledging that there may be situations where disclosing information is crucial for these purposes, even if it infringes on data protection principles. Legal requirements, disclosure required by law or court order is exempt, recognizing the need to comply with legal obligations and judicial processes. Specific exemptions, journalism, literature, art, and research, sections 52 and 53. The Act provides dedicated exemptions for data processing related to journalism, literature, and art, section 52 processing for these purposes is exempt from certain data protection principles if the processing is for publishing literary or artistic material. The data controller believes publication is in the public interest. The data controller believes compliance would be incompatible with these special purposes. Further requirements for journalism, literature, and art, the exemption for these fields is strengthened by a requirement to demonstrate adherence to self-regulatory or ethical codes relevant to the publication. A mandate for the data commissioner to develop a code of practice for data processing in these areas. Research, History, and Statistics, Section 53 The Act provides flexibility for further data processing for these purposes if the further processing is compatible with the original purpose of data collection. The data is only used for research, historical, or statistical reasons. The data is not published in a way that identifies individuals. Safeguards and code of practice for research to mitigate risks associated with research, the Act. Requires data controllers and processors to establish safeguards against misuse of records. Exempts data processed solely for research from certain provisions if specific conditions are met and results are anonymized. Mandates the data commissioner to create a code of practice for data processing for research, history, and statistics. Additional exemptions, section 54 and 55. The Act grants further flexibility in its application by allowing exemptions by the data commissioner. The data commissioner can prescribe other specific instances where compliance with certain Act provisions can be exempt. This allows for adaptability based on evolving circumstances and data processing practices. Data Sharing Code, Section 55 The Data Commissioner can issue a code of practice for data sharing, which provides practical guidance on sharing personal data while complying with the Act. Includes guidance to promote good practices in data sharing. Specifies rules for lawful data exchange between government departments and public sector agencies. Key takeaways. Balancing Act, Part 7 demonstrates a nuanced approach to data protection, acknowledging that while crucial, it's not absolute and must be balanced against other legitimate interests. 
Exemptions are specific, not general, the Act outlines specific grounds for exemption, and even when exempt, data controllers and processors must still adhere to core data protection principles and implement security safeguards. Transparency and accountability remain important, the provisions for codes of practice, data commissioner oversight, and adherence to ethical standards within specific sectors aim to maintain transparency and accountability even within these exempt areas. This is a summary of Part 8 Enforcement of the Data Protection Act in Kenya. Part 8 of the Kenyan Data Protection Act outlines the mechanisms for enforcing the Act's provisions and seeking redress for violations. This section establishes the powers of the Data Commissioner in investigating complaints, issuing enforcement notices, and imposing penalties. It also outlines the rights of data subjects to file complaints and seek compensation for damages. Complaints Process and Data Commissioner's Powers, Sections 56 and 57 Right to lodge a complaint, data subjects can file complaints with the Data Commissioner if they believe their rights under the Act have been infringed upon by any person or entity. Complaints can be submitted orally or in writing. Investigation Timeframe The Data Commissioner is required to investigate and conclude all complaints within 90 days. Powers to compel cooperation, the data commissioner has the authority to summon witnesses, request relevant documents, and require individuals to provide statements under oath to facilitate investigations. Accessing electronic data, the data commissioner can compel individuals or organizations to provide access to information stored on electronic devices in a readable and portable format. Offense for non-compliance, failure to comply with the data commissioner's requests during an investigation, or providing false or misleading information, is considered an offense under the Act. Enforcement Notices and Penalties, Sections 58 to 63 Issuing enforcement notices, if the data commissioner determines that a person or entity has violated the Act, they can issue an enforcement notice. This notice requires the offending party to take specific steps to rectify the violation within a defined time frame, but least 21 days. Contents of enforcement notices Enforcement notices must clearly state the violated provision, the required remedial measures, the deadline for compliance, and the right to appeal. Penalty for non-compliance with enforcement notices Failure to comply with an enforcement notice can lead to a fine of up to 5 million shillings, imprisonment for up to two years, or both. Seeking assistance from other authorities, the data commissioner can request assistance from other relevant authorities or individuals to gather information or conduct investigations. Power of entry and such, with a warrant from a court, the data commissioner can enter and such premises to execute their duties and powers under the Act. Obstruction is an offense, obstructing or impeding the data commissioner's investigation, refusing to provide information or access to premises, or providing false information is an offense punishable by a fine of up to 5 million shillings, imprisonment for up to two years, or both. Penalty notices, as an alternative to enforcement notices, the data commissioner can issue penalty notices requiring the offending party to pay a fine directly to the office of the data commissioner. Factors considered for penalty notices, the data commissioner considers various factors when deciding whether to issue a penalty notice and determining the amount, including the severity and duration of the violation, intent, attempts to mitigate damage, level of cooperation, and previous violations. Maximum administrative fine, the maximum penalty for violating the act, imposed through a penalty notice, is 5 million shillings or 1% of the undertaking's annual turnover in the preceding financial year, whichever is lower. Appeals and Compensation, Section 64-66 Right to appeal any person or entity subject to administrative action by the data commissioner, including enforcement notices and penalty notices, has the right to appeal to the High Court. 
Compensation for damages, data subjects who suffer harm due to a violation of the Act are entitled to compensation from the data controller or data processor. Liability of data controllers and processors, while data controllers are generally liable for damages caused by data processing, data processors are only liable if they fail to comply with specific obligations directed at them or act outside the data controller's lawful instructions. Exemption from liability Data controllers and processors can be exempted from liability if they can prove they were not responsible for the event that caused the damage. Definition of damage Damage encompasses financial losses and non-financial damages like distress. Preservation orders The data commissioner can seek a preservation order from a court to safeguard personal data at risk of loss or modification. Key takeaways Strong enforcement mechanisms, Part 8 provides a robust framework for enforcing the Data Protection Act and holding violators accountable. Protecting data subjects' rights, the emphasis on data subjects' rights to file complaints, participate in investigations, and seek compensation underscores the Act's commitment to empowering individuals and protecting their personal information. Promoting compliance, the combination of investigative powers, enforcement notices, penalty notices, and the potential for significant fines creates a strong incentive for data controllers and processors to comply with the Act. Fairness and due process, the right to appeal administrative actions ensures fairness and provides a mechanism for addressing disputes through the judicial system. Funding and Financial Management of Kenya's Data Protection Office Part 9 of the Kenyan Data Protection Act focuses on the financial provisions that govern the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner. This section ensures the office has the necessary financial resources and outlines a transparent and accountable system for managing its finances. Sources of Funding Section 67 the Act outlines three primary sources of funding for the office. Parliamentary allocation, the National Assembly is responsible for allocating funds to the office as part of the national budget. External contributions, the office is authorized to receive grants, gifts, donations, and endowments from various sources. This allows for additional financial support from organizations invested in data protection. Operational revenue of funds generated through the office's activities, such as fees for services, are also considered part of its financial resources. Annual Budget and Expenditure, Section 68 To ensure responsible financial planning, the Act mandates the following. Preparation of annual estimates, the data commissioner must prepare a detailed budget outlining the office's estimated revenue and expenditure for the upcoming financial year. This budget is due at least three months before the start of the new financial year. Comprehensive budget coverage, the budget must include provisions for all anticipated expenses, including staff salaries, allowances, and benefits. Pension and Retirement Contributions Acquisition, Maintenance, and Replacement of Equipment and Property Training, Research, and Development Activities Reserve Funds for Future Liabilities and Unforeseen Expenses Any Other Expenditure Necessary to Fulfill the Act's Objectives Submission to the Cabinet Secretary, the prepared budget is then submitted to the Cabinet Secretary responsible for information and communication technology for review. Tabling in the National Assembly, the Cabinet Secretary presents the office's budget to the National Assembly, integrating it into the national budget process. Financial Accountability and Reporting, Section 69 and 70 to ensure transparency and accountability in managing public funds, the Act stipulates. Compliance with financial laws, the office is required to prepare its accounts, undergo audits, and present reports following the guidelines outlined in the Kenyan Constitution, the Public Finance Management Act of 2012, and other relevant audit regulations for public entities. 
Annual report preparation within three months of each financial year's end, the data commissioner must prepare a comprehensive annual report. This report is submitted to the cabinet secretary. Submission to the National Assembly, the Cabinet Secretary then submits the office's annual report to the National Assembly within three months of receiving it. Contents of the annual report, the report provides a detailed account of the office's activities and financial performance during the preceding year, including audited financial statements, a description of the office's operations and achievements, Relevant statistical data related to the data commissioner's functions. An assessment of the impact of the office's work. Any obstacles faced in achieving the act's objectives. Other pertinent information the data commissioner deems necessary. Key takeaways. Financial independence enables effective oversight by providing a clear framework for funding and financial management. Part 9 ensures the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner can operate independently and effectively fulfill its mandate of protecting personal data. Transparency and accountability safeguard public trust, the emphasis on detailed budgeting, independent audits, and comprehensive reporting to both the executive and legislative branches promotes transparency and accountability in how public funds are used. Clear processes ensure responsible resource allocation, the structured process for budget preparation, review, and approval ensures resources are allocated responsibly and aligned with the office's strategic priorities. Financial Provisions for Kenya's Data Protection Office, Part 9 Part 9 of the Kenyan Data Protection Act details how the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner is funded and how its financial operations are managed. Here's a breakdown of Part 9 in simpler terms. Where does the money come from? Section 67. The Kenyan Parliament, National Assembly, allocates funds to the office as part of the national budget. The office can receive grants, donations, and other financial gifts from organizations. The office can generate revenue through its activities, though the Act doesn't specify what those revenue-generating activities might be. How is the money spent? Section 68. Each year, the data commissioner creates a detailed budget showing how the office plans to spend its money. This budget must be prepared three months before the start of the new financial year. The budget must account for all expected expenses, including salaries and benefits for the office's staff, retirement contributions, buying, maintaining, and replacing equipment and property, training programs, research, and development activities, a reserve fund for unexpected expenses, anything else needed to achieve the Act's goals. The budget is given to the cabinet secretary who is responsible for information and communication technology. The cabinet secretary then presents the budget to the National Assembly as part of the national budget process. How is the office held accountable for its spending? Section 69 and 70. The office must follow all relevant Kenyan laws and regulations when managing its finances, this includes the Kenyan Constitution and the Public Finance Management Act of 2012. The office must undergo annual audits, independent reviews of its financial records, to ensure transparency. The data commissioner creates a yearly report within three months of the end of the financial year detailing. The office's financial statements, how much money it received and spent. The office's activities and what it accomplished. Relevant statistics about the data commissioner's work. Any challenges the office faced in trying to fulfill the Data Protection Act's goals. Any other information the data commissioner thinks is important to include. This report is given to the cabinet secretary who then submits it to the National Assembly. In essence, Part 9 wants to ensure the Data Protection Office has the resources it needs to function and that it's using those resources responsibly and transparently. 
Regulations and the Cabinet Secretary's Role in Kenya's Data Protection Act, Part 10. Part 10 of the Kenyan Data Protection Act focuses on the delegated powers given to the Cabinet Secretary responsible for information and communication technology. This section outlines the Cabinet Secretary's authority to create specific regulations that will put the Act's broader principles into practice. The Power to Create Regulations, Section 71 The Act grants the Cabinet Secretary the power to establish detailed regulations to implement the Data Protection Act. These regulations are essential for clarifying the practical aspects of various provisions and ensuring their effective enforcement. Specific Areas for Regulation while the Cabinet Secretary has broad regulatory authority, the Act highlights several specific areas where regulations are anticipated. Requirements for data controllers and processors Regulations can establish detailed requirements that data controllers and processors must follow when processing personal data. This may include aspects like data security standards, data retention policies, and procedures for handling data subject requests. Certification programs, the Cabinet Secretary can establish certification programs to recognize organizations that meet specific data protection standards. Notice and registration procedures, regulations can define the required content and procedures for data controllers and processors when providing notices to data subjects or registering with the Data Protection Commissioner. Data subject information, the Cabinet Secretary can determine what specific information data subjects must be provided and how it should be communicated to them. This ensures transparency and enables data subjects to exercise their rights effectively. Fees and charges, the Act allows for the imposition of fees for certain services related to data protection. Regulations can establish these fees and the procedures for their collection. Safeguarding data subject rights, regulations can introduce additional measures to safeguard the rights, freedoms, and legitimate interests of data subjects, further strengthening the Act's protections. Data processing within Kenya, the Cabinet Secretary can outline specific types of data processing that must be carried out within Kenya for strategic or revenue protection purposes. Codes of practice and guidelines, regulations can govern the development, issuance, and approval of codes of practice and guidelines to provide practical guidance to data controllers, processors, and data protection officers. Constitutional Limits on Regulatory Power, Section 71 To ensure the Cabinet Secretary's regulatory power is not used arbitrarily, the Act includes safeguards aligned with the Kenyan Constitution. Regulations must align with the Act. The regulations created by the Cabinet Secretary must directly support and give effect to the Data Protection Act's provisions. They cannot introduce new obligations or restrictions not grounded in the Act itself. Transparency and public accountability, the purpose and objectives behind each regulation must be clearly articulated to promote transparency and allow for public scrutiny. Principles Guiding Delegated Power, Section 71 The Act further emphasizes that any regulations created under Part 10 must adhere to established legal principles and standards. Statutory Instruments Act of 2013, the process of developing and implementing regulations must follow the procedures outlined in this Act. Interpretation and General Provisions Act regulations must be interpreted and applied consistently with the general principles of statutory interpretation outlined in this Act. International law regulations must respect Kenya's obligations under international law, including treaties and conventions that address data protection. Key Takeaways Part 10 operationalizes the Data Protection Act. It empowers the Cabinet Secretary to develop detailed regulations that translate the Act's principles into concrete rules and procedures. Regulatory flexibility allows for adaptability. The broad scope of regulatory power allows the government to adapt to evolving data protection challenges and technologies. 
Constitutional safeguards prevent abuse of power. The Act embeds constitutional principles of limited government and public accountability to ensure regulations are necessary, proportionate, and aligned with the Act's purpose. Adherence to legal standards ensures validity by grounding regulations in established legal frameworks. The Act aims to prevent legal challenges and ensure their enforceability. Miscellaneous provisions addressing specific offenses and establishing a framework for practical guidance, Part 11. Part 11 of the Kenyan Data Protection Act addresses a range of miscellaneous provisions that complement the Act's core principles and enforcement mechanisms. These provisions cover offenses related to unlawful data disclosure, establish a general penalty framework, and empower the data commissioner to issue practical guidance through codes, guidelines, and certification programs. Additionally, Part 11 outlines consequential amendments to existing Kenyan laws to align them with the Data Protection Act. Offenses of Unlawful Disclosure of Personal Data, Section 72 This section outlines specific offenses related to the unauthorized disclosure of personal data. It targets both those who control data and those who might seek to access or distribute it without authorization. Data controllers, data controllers commit an offense if they disclose personal data in a way that conflicts with the original purpose of data collection, without a lawful excuse. Data processors, data processors are prohibited from disclosing the personal data they process on behalf of a data controller without the data controller's explicit permission, unless a lawful excuse exists. Unauthorized access and disclosure, the Act makes it an offense to gain unauthorized access to personal data or to disclose it to third parties. This provision applies to individuals who are not authorized employees or agents of the data controller or processor. Selling personal data, offering to sell personal data obtained through a breach of the Act's provisions is an offense. Even advertising that such data is for sale is considered a violation. General Penalty, Section 73 To ensure a robust deterrent against violations, Part 11 establishes a general penalty framework. Penalties for unspecified offenses, for offenses without a designated penalty or for general contraventions of the Act, individuals can face a fine of up to 3 million shillings, imprisonment for up to 10 years, or both. Additional court orders, in addition to fines and imprisonment, courts can issue orders to confiscate equipment or materials used in committing the offense. Stop ongoing violations of the Act. Codes, Guidelines, and Certification, Section 74. Recognizing the need for clear guidance in implementing the Act's principles, Part 11 empowers the Data Commissioner to develop supporting materials. Issuing guidelines and codes of practice, the Data Commissioner can issue guidelines and codes of practice tailored to data controllers, data processors, and data protection officers, providing practical advice on fulfilling their obligations under the Act. Certification standards and seals to incentivize compliance, the Data Commissioner can introduce data protection certification programs. Organizations that meet defined standards can be awarded certification seals or marks, demonstrating their commitment to data protection. Third-party certification, the Act permits the Data Commissioner to require certification by accredited third-party bodies, ensuring an independent assessment of compliance. Sector-specific guidance, acknowledging the diverse ways data is processed across industries, the Data Commissioner is authorized to develop guidelines for specific sectors like health, finance, education, and social protection. Consequential Amendments, Section 75 To avoid conflicts and ensure a unified legal framework for data protection, Part 11 states that the second schedule lists the amendments to existing Kenyan laws necessary to harmonize them with the Data Protection Act. The specifics of these amendments are included in the second schedule itself. Key Takeaways 
Part 11 fills in the gaps, it addresses specific offenses not covered in other parts of the Act, particularly those related to the unauthorized disclosure and commercial exploitation of personal data. A layered approach to enforcement, the general penalty framework ensures that all violations are subject to consequences, even if a specific penalty is not explicitly stated elsewhere. Practical guidance promotes compliance by empowering the data commissioner to create codes, guidelines, and certification programs. Part 11 aims to facilitate understanding and encourage voluntary compliance with the Act. Harmonization with existing laws, the inclusion of consequential amendments demonstrates a commitment to creating a cohesive and comprehensive legal framework for data protection in Kenya.